it's not on, but I, the, uh, I want to uh, explain the agenda for this morning. First, we're going to hear from that larger-than-life impresario by the name of Rocco Landisman, <laughs> um, the, our new chair for the Endowment for the Arts, uh, and we're going to talk about the NEA's uh, request for 2011. At the inclusion, conclusion of the NEA budget hearing, we'll adjourn, and then we'll hear from the co-chair of the Congressional Arts Caucus, uh, Louise Slaughter uh, from New York. And once we've heard from Louise, uh, we'll hear from an esteemed panel of witnesses on the value of federal support for the arts and arts education. I think Jeff Daniels and, and uh, Kyle McLaughlin and so on, a number of people are coming over. Um, we have a busy schedule uh, as a result. Uh, I, I don't have too long a statement. Here's Steve LaTourette came just in time for us. I think he <laughs> thought I'd be finished. But, uh, I, uh, I, of course, want to welcome Mr. Landisman. This is his first appearance before our subcommittee. Um, we're here today not only to discuss your proposed budget, but to celebrate the arts in America. This is one of the most fun days of, uh, of the year in the Congress. Of course, some days it's not team competition. There have been some days when it's <laughs> or anything but fun. But um, we're going to talk about the influence that uh, arts uh, has in building and transforming our community. Um, the, uh, every year, the nonprofit arts and culture industry generates $166 billion in economic activity, almost 6 billion jobs, uh, more than $100 billion in household income, and over $28 billion in federal, state, and local tax <coughs> revenue. Today has been designated as Arts Advocacy Day by Americans for the Arts. They've put together information on how far-reaching the arts are in developing and maintaining robust communities. They also improve student performance when art is incorporated into the curriculum. Uh, it's an industry that uh, um, uh, where I think the word transformation I is appropriate. We all know s stories about people seeing or hearing something truly motivating uh, and uh, changing their lives, lives as a result. Uh, Denise Graves was an example where she told us uh, in, in uh, it was in this hearing actually that uh, it, it, she grew up in Washington, but the Kennedy Center could have been the other end of the world until the NEA gave her an opportunity to hear her first opera. Um, someone picking up a paintbrush or finding new ways to communicate changes their lives and, of course, the lives of others. Arts are and remain an important part of our nation's economy, and it is a reflection of our culture. Uh, this Congress recognized the importance of the arts to the economy by providing the National Endowment for the Arts $50 million in Recovery Act funds. Um, not all of that money uh, um, has, uh, has been completely spent, but all of it has been obligated. Uh, it's, uh, it has gone out throughout the country. It's assisted arts organizations in all 50 states and territories. So we congratulate the endowment for seeing to it that that money went out immediately when it were where and when it was needed. Um, the, the budget request is $161 million. It's a reduction of more than $6 million from last year's enacted level. Uh, that's the President's request, uh, as it was the previous year in fiscal year 2010. Uh, while I understand the fiscal constraints we are facing, uh, we are going to want to ask you about the impact these reductions will have on your grant programs. And in addition, uh, we want to discuss your $5 million request for your new initiative, Our Town. Jeff Daniels was just telling us he started this Purple Rose studio, and he's putting on Our Town uh, uh, in Michigan. I understand this initiative is intended to revitalize communities by enhancing the presence of arts in those communities, and uh, we share your vision of strengthening communities through the presence of arts, and are uh, interested in hearing about this initiative. Um, one other thing, too. Now, this is, is so important. And Steve, I hope you're focusing on this. <laughs> Mr. Landisman won the trifecta in the Kentucky Derby. Can you believe that? I mean, talk about, uh, you know, being in awe of somebody. <laughs> what are you paying? <laughs> $1.3 million. I mean, I've been married three times, but it was hardly the trifecta. You know, it's <laughs> anyway, I shouldn't have said that. That's uh, can we can we just delete that from the record? Anyways, um, 
Okay, now uh, moving along, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's hear from uh, Mr. Simpson, who um, is a respected artist in his own right. Uh, the, uh, and in fact, uh, Mr. Landisman was right uh, just in Idaho, I read about in the New York Times. Uh, and uh, Mr. Simpson, I know what they do. They spelled uh, I-D-A-H-O, I think that's pretty close. Yeah. They know where it is? <laughs> yeah. Many I'm just kidding. Still. I actually we had an open statement, but after that comment, I'm not <laughs> sure that I can get it out, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Chairman Landisman, uh, I want to join Chairman Moran in uh, welcoming you to testify today on your fiscal 2011 uh, budget request. We look forward to learning more about the important work the NEA is undertaking uh, across the country. I also want to thank you and Anita for uh, making time in your busy schedule to join me in Idaho last week for a whirlwind tour of what the finest that the uh, Idaho arts community has to offer. During the course of a very busy day, you had the opportunity to see firsthand the value of the arts in rural Idaho. Uh, the Big Read, the Shakespeare and American Communities and other NEA programs are the lifeblood of the arts in Boise, Jerome and many other communities. And in fact, I picked up the paper the day after you were here and the Shakespeareans uh, Festival, the play we saw was over in Blackfoot in my hometown uh, the next day and they were obviously on the front page of the paper there uh, the next day. So they do a great job and I really appreciate the NEA's efforts to work with states, uh, art, state art organizations because this is how we reach rural communities in Idaho and across the country. As you know, the NEA found itself at the center of a political firestorm in the mid-1990s because it began to stray from its central mission. Uh, it was a time when the NEA was receiving national attention not because of the quality of, the initi of its initiatives, but because a, a specific grant became the subject of some controversy. After a period of introspection and congressional reforms instituted by this subcommittee, and with strong leadership, uh, the Arts Endowment uh, found its footing again and Congress has responded with more robust budgets. In recent years, the NEA has been successful because of its emphasis on promoting arts for all Americans rather than individual artists. Fifteen years ago, the NEA was fighting for its very survival. Today, Democrats and Republicans provide bi broad bipartisan support for the NEA. A very important strategic decision was made some time ago, which I encourage you to continue for the NEA to provide grants, uh, grant funding to art organizations and local communities in every congressional district in the country. Local arts organizations, particularly those in rural areas uh, where opportunities to experience the arts are often limited, uh, welcome the opportunity to partner with the NEA on large national initiatives like the Big Read and Shakespeare in American Communities. Today, the arts are prospering in both rural and urban settings and reaching a greater cross-section of our country than ever before. I want to close by expressing my support for the Big Read, arguably one of the most popular and successful initiatives ever developed by the NEA. The Big Read has worked largely because the NEA created partnerships across the country involving public, private, nonprofit, and corporate entities. Uh, created in 2006, this national initiative to encourage literacy uh, and the art of literary reading has been hosted by more than 400 towns and cities in all 50 states with over 21,000 local and national organizations supporting this effort. This initiative is popular because it has broad reach all across all segments of society, urban and rural, rich and poor, and is widely supported by both Democrats and Republicans. The Big Read makes literature a topic of conversation in a community and creates synergy uh, between educators, civic leaders, and citizens. Local libraries and school libraries are transformed from book lending institutions to community cultural centers. Because of its proven success, I look forward to working with Chairman Moran and members of the subcommittee to ensure the big, sure the big read is, uh, receives adequate levels of funding uh, going forward. Uh, thank you for being here again today. I really enjoyed the time out in Idaho, and uh, I thought it was uh, uh, a good experience for all of us. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Congressman. Be before I begin, speaking of arts in rural areas, they told me I was visiting Congressman Simpson's district. They neglected to tell me that basically his district is the whole state of Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're in Boise, and they said, well, we're going to go on to the next town. Well, the next town is 200 miles away. And then we're going to go to the next town after that, so it's another 150 miles away. So we did spend a lot of time uh, in the car, but it's a, a gorgeously beautiful place, and I'm really glad to be there. Chairman and distinguished members of the subcommittee. I'm pleased to be appearing before this subcommittee for the first time as chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. 
i look forward to discussing with you the president's fiscal year two thousand and eleven budget request of one hundred sixty one million three hundred fifteen thousand dollars which includes support for our ongoing activities as well as five million dollars for a new initiative to be referred to as our tenth before i speak about the president's budget i would like to briefly bring you up to date on what we have been doing since i joined the agency this past august as you know in fiscal year two thousand and ten we expect to invest nearly one hundred forty million dollars in support of the arts throughout the nation through the more than two thousand direct grants expected to be awarded we can anticipate reaching nearly one hundred million people but our region impact go even further through the forty percent of our grant making funds awarded to the state arts agencies and their regional arts organizations thousands of additional grants are awarded to support worthy projects in communities throughout the country in fiscal year two thousand and ten we have an almost eight million dollar budget for learning in the arts grant and we will invest well over four million dollars in arts education through our access to artistic excellence grants and state partnerships in addition I've challenged my staff to find at least one arts education project in every congressional district. In order for the NEA to invest most effectively, it is important that the arts organizations and creative communities across this country get closely connected to us. We are using technology to connect even more Americans with the agency. We have launched an agency blog on our website, www.arts.gov, and a Twitter account, NEA Arts. We will shortly launch a Facebook page to continue to broaden our reach and keep the public informed in real time. And we have begun webcasting agency convenings, most recently we webcast the March 2010 public meeting of our National Council on the Arts, which helped ensure even greater transparency into the work of the agency. Technology is no substitute for in-person meetings, so last October I announced that I would begin an Art Works tour. When I say Art Works, I have three meanings for those two words. One, they are a noun that refers to the creation of artists, works of art. Two, they remind us that art works on audiences and viewers to transport and inspire them. Three, they are a reminder that arts workers have real jobs and are a vital part of this country's economy. I was in Pennsylvania last week on the governor's side of the Pennsylvania Cultural Data Project, which reports that in Pennsylvania alone, Nonprofit cultural organizations and their audiences have direct expenditures of $1.99 billion, which supports over 48,000 full time equivalent jobs and means over 900 million in resident household income. I began seeing how art works in Peoria, Illinois last November, and most recently, this last Monday, in fact, I had the pleasure of joining Congressman Simpson in his district to see how art works in Boise, Jerome, and Twin Falls, Idaho. Everywhere I go, I see how the arts help create the, the sorts of places where people like to live, work, and play. In fact, Chairman Moran recently wrote in the Falls, Falls Church News Press about how the arts have transformed communities ranging from New York Mills, Minnesota to Paducah, Kentucky. Thank you for that. <laughs> and Professor Mark Stern, along with his colleagues from the University of Pennsylvania and the Reinvestment Fund, has discovered that the presence of the arts has three main effects. One, the arts are a force for social cohesion and civic engagement. People who participate in the arts are more likely to engage in other civic activities, leading to more stable neighborhoods. I consider that very important. Secondly, the arts are a force for child welfare. Low-income populations with high cultural participation are more than twice as likely to have very low truancy and delinquency rates. And three, the arts are a poverty fighter. They do this through direct employment, and they do this by leveraging other jobs, the restaurants, retail stores, and hotels that spring up alongside cultural districts. This brings me to the President's fiscal 2011 budget request for the National Endowment for the Arts. As you know, the NEA has a threefold mission, to support excellence in the arts, both new and established, to bring the arts to all Americans, and to provide leadership to arts education. The President's budget request maintains the NEA's positive momentum in providing support to this country's nonprofit arts organizations. There are two changes that I would like to highlight for your attention. In April 2005, the NEA launched a funding initiative called American Masterpieces that was designed to ensure audiences the opportunity to see classic American repertoire. As we reviewed these grants, we realized that the sorts of projects and organizations being funded through this program were largely redundant 
to the support being offered through our core business model. The one notable, the one notable exception to this being the Big Read, which provides communities the opportunity to read, discuss, and engage with one another around a shared reading experience. This program will continue, and will continue as the agency's largest national initiative. In fiscal 2010, the NEA's budget contained 10 million in American Massachusetts funding. In our 2011 budget, you'll see that we have proposed instead to have 5 million to fund our town, which I will discuss in a moment, 1.5 million to continue the big read, and the balance to contribute toward offsetting any differences between our fiscal 2010 and 2011 allocations through our direct, direct grant. We are extraordinarily proud of the success of our program and the benefits that accrue to the American people. We believe, however, that there is an element of our grant-making program that has been missing, an element that is particularly important today. This is, of course, the Our Town Initiative presented in the, fiscal year, in the full year 2011 budget. This initiative is built upon solid fact-based research, such as that of Professor, Professor Stern, personal first-hand observation, and the recognition that all Americans have an investment in the places they live. Through Our Town, we anticipate investing the proposed $5 million in up to 35 communities to support planning and design projects and arts engagement strategies. The funded projects might include the mapping of a cultural district along with its, along with its development potential, the integration of public art into civic spaces, a community waterfront festival, affordable housing for low-income artists, rehearsal spaces to serve as research and development space for our performing arts companies, outdoor exhibitions, and performances to enliven civic spaces and engage citizens, and so on. Almost every federal agency under this administration is looking at its role in helping to create sustainable communities, and I've been meeting with other federal agency heads to talk about ways that our agencies might partner in deep and meaningful ways. It is my hope that as our town recipients are selected, we can look at the other federal agencies working in those same places to discover areas of mutual interest and overlap. Everywhere I have gone over the past nine months, I've been encouraged by the resilience and adaptability of our arts organizations as they strive to fulfill their mission in the midst of a challenging economy. They remain active and optimistic, and I remain eager to enjoy their work and offer the NEA support as effectively as we can. The thriving arts sector brings with it economic and cultural vitality that helps drive community sustainability. In short, art works. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Let me, let me end by thanking the chairman and the distinguished members of the subcommittee for your ongoing support of both the agency and the arts. I look forward to our discussion, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, because we have other uh, witnesses, we're, uh, this is not gonna be as long as I wish it could be, because this is uh, one of the most exciting aspects of the uh, entire preparations for that we have to consider. Uh, but your request uh, is for a reduction. Uh, and yet your initiative uh, is to uh, create jobs all over the country, uh, new jobs, uh, jobs that are designed to uh, serve as a magnet for further economic development. Um, I see the Ford Foundation is trying to do the same thing, uh, again with limited resources, but they looked at the research and understood that uh, the, uh, a, a theater or uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, per performing uh, 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 facility invariably serves as a magnet uh, and, and you get restaurants and retail and so on. Um, maybe you could share with us, if you had your druthers, uh, what would this budget look like? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, don't go too carried away, but, um, uh, you know, if you, uh, if, if you were asking for money that you know could be very well spent, spent within the ensuing fiscal year, and spent to create more jobs and economic development throughout the country. What would it? Uh, what would you be asking for? Well, of course, I'm here to defend the, the I know that. budgetary request. That's that's why I asked you to go. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> to uh, to look beyond uh, 
the parameters of uh, the administration, and uh, you know, we're asking you directly uh, if this were possible. Well, if it were possible, of course, I would love love to see uh, a restoration at least to last year's numbers. That's not really really my call. I'm I'm here to defend the the uh, the budget that's committed before us. I I do know that the our town money, in my belief, is highly leveraged money. That that uh, money is going to have a ripple effect through all of the communities where 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 we take this initiative. I'm convinced of that because it's only five million dollars to start. We're going to have to start in in very limited fashion. Uh, in only a few places. I think we're talking about 35 communities to uh, to begin with. But you mentioned something else that I think is very interesting here, which is um, there was an, uh, you mentioned the Ford Foundation. They recently uh, announced a $100 million new strategic initiative in the arts that is very exciting to me. And I'm hoping we can work alongside them in, in, in some of the things that they're doing, which are very enlightening. One of the first things I did when I was nominated for this position, long before I was confirmed, was to meet with the heads of the major foundations that have uh, interest in funding funding the arts to talk to them about what they, they were doing. I met with Luigi Dini at the, at the Ford Foundation and, and Rick Rasmussen at, at Kresge in, in Detroit and, and Luis Canales in, in, in uh, with the Irvine Foundation in California and Don Randall at Mellon. They are very interested in, in the arts and they seem to be very interested in what the NEA uh, is planning to do strategically in the arts and I'm hoping that one way we can leverage our very limited resources is, is through close cooperation with the, with the private sector, foundations, individuals, corporations. And I think that will be very meaningful for us going forward. Well, let's just uh, conjecture if we were able to restore uh, your budget to last year's levels, um, how much additional economic activity do you think that would generate given the fact that it's highly leveraged? Well, the Our, the Our Town program, as we've conceived it, has a, has a very high multiplier effect. One of the things we've learned is that as you bring art and artists into the center of town, it changes that town profoundly in, in, in every way, but certainly in an economic way. That, um, I, you know, that expression in Field of Dreams, uh, if you build it, they will come. We're mm -hmm. doing the, uh, the uh, reverse of that. We're saying that um, if you come, they will build it. That if you bring art and artists into town, businesses will follow because you People don't follow businesses. Businesses follow people. And, pe and businesses are looking for a, an educated, committed, uh, enlightened workforce. And that kind of workforce, if you poll them about where they want to be, they cite two things again and again, education and culture. Where you have culture in a community, you attract people. And those people attract business. And those communities start to change. We believe that, we believe passionately that the arts revitalize neighborhoods and communities. And, um, we're very committed to that. Well, that's a, a compelling uh, argument. Uh, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for the coffee. You're welcome. <laughs> now I owe you one. Jeez, I'm sure you're going to get even at some, some point in time. <laughs> There'll be opportunities. As I said, thanks for, uh, thanks for being here today. Let's talk a little bit about our town. Five million bucks. What can we do with five million bucks uh, in terms of I think you said planning and design. Give an example of what you might do. Grants are going to go out for a quarter of a million bucks, up to a quarter of a million bucks, I think. Uh, what, what do you expect? And I, I guess the reason I ask this is I, I agree with what you say and what you're trying to do. I wonder what you can do with such a limited amount of money in terms of such a big scope of planning and designing, especially when I look within the budget request and – not for the NEA, but for uh, the National Park Service, there was uh, a program that's gone on for years called Save America's Treasures. We have used that for seed money to restore theaters in communities and stuff. So, but I, how am I supposed to say it? I have no mind. <laughs> <laughs> theater, theater, <laughs> you know, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Yeah, one of those. A place where you go watch plays and movies, those kind of things. Um, seem to have lost my train of thought here. Well, what is no, our, but what it, is our town gonna be the, the problem is is that I see the we're reducing the budget here for that, and I've seen the great work that some of that does. We're reducing the budget over here, the proposal to eliminate that, and now we're starting a new program over here, which I'm not, I'm not opposed to, 
I'm just wondering how is different, what it is going to do uh, to promote the arts and community? The three components will be planning, which might be the mapping of, of cultural aspe assets, assets in, in, in an area. Right, you can give me an example. Like, what do you mean, mapping of cultural assets? Finding out, wh finding out what's what's there, what, uh, where, where they are, what their, what their needs are, how they relate to the communities and, and, and to each other. It's basically to take stock. Okay. Of what, uh, of, of what is, of what is there. The another element is, is design. That's a big component um, of this, which is um, encouraging partnerships that link compelling uh, architecture, uh, ener energetic streetscapes, um, sustainable parks and landscapes. There's a, there's a great example of that in my hometown in, of, of St. Louis, Missouri, where it used to be people would come down from the suburbs to, uh, to see a ball game at Busch Stadium, drive right back, par park in the parking lot, drive right back to the, to, the, to the suburbs. Now there's something there called City Garden, which is an open public sculpture garden that people now take time to mill through and to visit and enjoy. And what happens is they, they end up milling around downtown and engaging the rest of the the city. They're, they're not just making a, a, a one shot to the to the ballpark. A lot of this involves preservation and creative reuse of buildings. Um, boy, did I see that in Boise. Yeah. Uh, the Egyptian theater is is almost a poster child for this. Um, its effect on the economy of of, of, of downtown. A look at the um, uh, Basque development uh, in, in 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 that block, which is uh, both preservation and creative reuse involved. This has a direct demonstrable effect on uh, on, on local uh, economies. Um, in in Old Town, taking a um, a torpedo factory and making it into one of the most engaging collection of art galleries uh, that you could possibly imagine. This is exactly what we're talking about with our town. Uh, to me, it is not only wonderful for the arts, but it's wonderful for the, eco the economies of every community that that we bring it to, and and I feel very strongly about. Are we being counterproductive, in your opinion? Maybe you don't want to answer this because it deals with an important <laughs> question. In eliminating a program over here that I think is very important uh, in terms of saving historic treasures in, in this country, uh, on the one hand, and starting a program to do maybe the same thing but more broadly, uh, on the other hand? The historic treasures are not really – that that's part that's out of my department really so that's something I would have to get that would probably be a good thing not to not to comment uh, on uh, be be uh, out of my league I think but but I I do know that these funds uh, leverage very powerfully into the into would the federal it economy would it be would yeah. apply. I, can, I can give you one one great example is in is in Detroit where you have the old General Motors Design Center that had fallen into had fallen into disuse. It's now been reborn as the Taubman Center, which where they're training kids. There's there's a arts charter school and a college there to train kids in the new economy. They're training them in industrial design for the present day. It's the reuse of a building and it's the training for for the new economy in Detroit. Would it be like in Idaho Falls, uh, where I'm from, the right along the river, the falls there? There's a there's a nice park and area, and there's a road that goes by it. One of the main roads, and the city's considering closing it down. I mean, they got some nice artwork, outdoor artwork and stuff all along there. They're thinking about closing it down, making a walking area and all that kind of stuff and com and uh, uh, connecting it with the Willard Theater, which is a performance arts center uh, downtown. And they're looking at that to do that to kind of revitalize the downtown, the old downtown historic community. That is, that is exactly right. And the, I think the good news is that uh, the administration gets this, uh, how, how these uh, in, uh, engagements go across the typical federal agency guidelines. Uh, the Secretary of Transportation, Ray LaHood, doesn't view the Department of Transportation just as an engineering and road building agency. He views it as directly related to the quality of life in a, in a community. So things like you've just described are very much in, uh, in the wheelhouse of the Department of Transportation, and I think that's a very exciting development. Uh, another subject, uh, just one more before we go on to Steve, uh, the Big Read program, as we talked about when you were out in Idaho, program is very popular in uh, throughout, uh, I think, Congress, uh, members of Congress throughout the country. Uh, we had looked at, uh, I guess, the goal at uh, the time it started as 10, uh, 10 pilot programs, and our goal was to reach 334 communities and stuff. With the 1.5 million we have, it's been substantially reduced. It'll, you, you're looking at 75 communities to do the big read in, in this year's budget. Substantial reduction, refocusing, and I understand that new administrations come in, they have different priorities, things they'd like to do a little. 
differently, and, and you have every right to do that, uh, and to put your emphasis on, on things that you think are important, like our town and stuff. Uh, but successful programs are successful programs, and I think we all understand that the Big Reed's been a very successful program. Uh, talk about what's going to happen with that, if you would. Uh, the Big Reed is a very, very popular NEA program, um, and it's popular with me. If I, didn't, if I wasn't committed to the Big, Big Reed, I would abolish it. Uh, we're maintaining it as the largest funded NEA program. What typically happens with these programs is they get started up at a small level with, with seed money and maybe a few pilot programs at first. An example of this would be uh, Shakespeare in American Communities or uh, the Jazz Masters program. The Big Read is another example. They get ratcheted up to um, a very high level as you're building awareness of it throughout the country and, and, and you do it build out to scale. And then they tend to go to a maintenance level where you feel you can have presence, strong presence throughout the country at a very high level on more of a, uh, of a maintenance commitment. And our 1.5 million is dedicated to that. And I, I think it's going to maintain the big read as a very, very strong program throughout the country. Do you expect with the reduction that's going on, communities seeing that this is a successful program to pick up the slack and start and, and move uh, this program forward in other communities without necessarily having the NEA involved in it, just seeing that it's been a successful program. That is the hope with every every NEA program. If, if the programs are, are that good, they're going to be sustained one, one way or another. Um, certainly with our help, we have a major commitment to it, but I think the, uh, the Big Read is, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a program that's been taken on by local communities everywhere, and I'm very hopeful about the future. Thank you. Mr. LaTourette. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Landsman, Mike Sue. I um, very much appreciated the courtesy that you provided by coming to see me a little while ago. I didn't know you were a trifecta winner. You didn't, you had hid that from me. And maybe, um, maybe a little bit later, if you're thinking of any lottery numbers, you could <laughs> share that with me. <laughs> I can't. Um, I, um, I'd, I'd like to pick up where Mr. Simpson dropped off. And I, I, I'm a big fan of the Big Read program as well. Could you just because I don't know, uh, tell me things like how often you swap out the books and, and how are the new books uh, collected? Uh, that we'd have to get back to you with, with some staff input on that. I'm not familiar enough with the, with the actual mechanics of the program to be, to be very uh, enlightened, but we can get you some information on that for the record for sure. Okay, I appreciate that. And I, I think at, at some point in the future over my spring break, I went to a, a company, toured a company called Playaway, and as I, I, mean, I was blown away. It, they basically have developed a technology where they uh, have an MP3 player that plays on a AAA battery that's completely dedicated to a book, Great. and so they have an uh, they have a you know uh, an agreement with the, the publisher, and uh, uh, it's very popular with libraries and it's also very popular with the troops because if you think about it, I mean you can take it in a you know thing like this, a little tin, uh, and uh, you get one one entire uh, audio book uh, with a triple A battery. I'm, I'm a theater guy. I love literature. So did my predecessor. I think literature is going to have a very, very strong place in the NEA going forward. Good. Well, I appreciate that. I, uh, Mr. Simpson, in his opening remarks, talked a little bit about <coughs> some of the controversy at the NEA in the 90s and um, so forth and so on. And I, I'm real familiar with that. And I said at last year's hearing, uh, it's worth repeating, um, that there wouldn't be an NEA if, if my mentor, Ralph Regular, hadn't stood up in the 90s in the face of some pretty serious pressure on, on my part of the house uh, to defund. I can remember <coughs> running for the first time in 1994 and we'd go to these uh, very conservative uh, uh, groups that uh, wanted to be supportive and, and they'd say, well, the first thing you, you have to do is eliminate the NEA, the NEH, and public broadcasting and we're going to defund them. Uh, and there were certainly some voices in the United States Congress in, in 1995 that that were on that track, and I, I, I fully believe that uh, Ralph Regular would have been the, the chairman of the full committee if he had not uh, taken that uh, that position back in the 1990s. And uh, I know that you know that, and I know you appreciate it. But I, the, the purpose of that long introduction, uh, because I really don't want to suck up too much to Ralph, because he's not here. When he's here, I'm really going to give the whole <laughs> the whole big presentation. But uh, after last year's hearing, there was. Uh, there was, in fact, a little dust-up going on. Uh, we had a hearing, and I can remember hearing some of the same voices. You go to a town hall meeting and say, well, wait a minute, there's somebody at the NEA that's sending emails around saying that the NEA uh, should be there to support uh, President Obama and, and, and his policy. I, you know, I don't know how you have a play about cap-and-trade, but I suppose you could do that. 
Uh, and so uh, I'm just wondering uh, what the status of that is relative to mission and uh, what happened to that employee and anything you want to tell us. Well, the, the fact is that it's my own personal view that um, we ought to not be politicized in, in any way, shape, or form, particularly the, the, the NEA. And in fact, um, there was a period before the time when I was uh, confirmed when I sent a very sharp email to, to, the, to a staff member that I knew at the NEA uh, expressing alarm that, that there had been an, uh, a, a meeting that, that seemed to have a, uh, a political purpose. The, the, um, the reference that you're making is to um, uh, some conference calls that uh, the communications director of the NEA uh, attended without the authorization of the then acting NEA chair. In fact, uh, she had specifically instructed him not to go. He, uh, he went anyway, and um, the uh, result um, is the dust up that you're, that you're talking about. Uh, there are a couple things I can report. Uh, number one, he, that, that individual no longer works at the NEA. Um, this occurred before I, uh, just before I arrived, and um, I dealt with that after I, after I got there. And uh, more specifically, I have instructed our general counsel to conduct training sessions about the Hatch Act with all of our staff at the NEA, including the senior staff, including myself. That session was held in October, and um, that is going to be an annual thing, along with uh, continual ethics instruction from the, from the, uh, from the general counsel. Uh, ethics training is going to be part of what you do when you, uh, when you, when you get to the NEA, and I'm going to do everything to make sure that nothing like that uh, happens on my watch. Well, you know, I, I really appreciate that answer, and I, I think that, that that answer and that kind of attitude uh, will make it a lot easier for people on this side of the aisle to be supportive of what it is you're doing. If, if any agency is seen as a, you know, an extension of either political party, it's not good for the agency and it's not good for the arts and so forth and so on. So I, I appreciate that answer. I wish you uh, good luck. Did you say you went to Twin Peaks, Idaho? Your pardon? Did you go to Twin Peaks, Idaho? I did. Is that the is that the TV show? Oh, Twin Twin Falls. Oh, all right, Twin, Twin Falls. Falls. Twin, no, that's all right, Twin, Twin Peaks is a TV show. Well, that's what I thought, and I thought I. <laughs> Sorry, Craig. <laughs> I was just wondering, and <coughs> and 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 Twin I Falls. Say this I can say this about Twin uh, Twin Falls. It's yeah. far. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're very good at distances there. Yeah, and, uh, and they apparently have a theater there. Right? There, 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 <laughs> there is a new theater and performing arts uh, center, an arts center being uh, being built there with with one of the most amazing views. Uh, theater you're ever going to see. Well, I appreciate it, and, and thank you for being here. I wish you good luck in, in what you're doing, and thank yeah. you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If I might respond, Mr. Mm. Chairman, I, I went down to the Smithsonian the other day, and if any of you have seen the art collection down there, the, new, the framing of the West, early photographs taken of the geological expeditions that were done, the most photographs of any one site are of Twin Falls, Idaho, and Shoshone Falls in their beautiful theater. Now I have <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Not their theater. I actually <laughs> have that uh, the Librarian of Congress gave me that book. It's on my coffee table, and I will uh, look at that and yeah, see, do that. And I'm okay. Thanks. Well, I'm glad we've uh, pursued that and clarified it. Thank yeah. you, <laughs> Mr. Lazarud and uh, Mr. Simpson. Uh, let me just ask a, a, a couple of things. Um, first of all, uh, the state arts councils are. are sort of disparate in the way that they're dealing with the current recession. Uh, some are maintaining their budget, others are cutting back on their budget. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, since this is very much a matter of leveraging, it would be unfortunate to uh, enable the states to supplant their own contribution with federal funds. And so I would hope that not be done. In other words, if a state is willing to hang in there and provide its own resources, then it should be uh, more likely to, to get support. Uh, and those states that don't make it a priority, uh, perhaps the NEA ought to be going around the state to the local levels that, that do understand how important the arts is, are to their communities. Uh, that's just a, a, a comment. I, I have uh, one question that I think is useful for the record. Uh, Mr. Simpson, Mr. La Tourette, being the enlightened people they are, uh, are not going to uh, raise these kinds of uh, uh, questions, but there will be some who... You will. No, uh, <laughs> no, I'm probably not going to, to be honest with you, but I want to be prepared to respond to those who bring up questions that are unsubstantiated by the facts. 
And, it, and one issue that they might raise is uh, some of the um, uh, performances or uh, shows or whatever that were funded by uh, Recovery Act funds, the, uh, the $50 million that was in the Recovery Act, you can't and don't try to control those. As I, I, and I want to make it clear for the record, what you did was to enable uh, people who were currently employed, in large part, to sustain, uh, be sustained in their uh, efforts to uh, maintain uh, uh, artistic activities. Uh, so you were providing jobs, not funding specific projects or shows or whatever. That was up to the discretion of the individuals. And uh, if, if you might want to elaborate that uh, on that for just a moment, Mr. Anderson. Yes, indeed, and, and, and thank you. The process for the our <coughs> grant was similar to the normal grant-making process. There was a panel review uh, submitted to the council and to the uh, to, to the chairman, and um, except that in this case it was somewhat accelerated. We had readers because there was a very condensed time frame that we had to get these grants out. But the criteria were were, were different. The what what the panelists were looking at in terms of the arrow related proposals were, were, was was one thing: jobs, preservation, and creation. That was the evaluation metric: if it preserved a job or created a job. Uh, and it could be proven and established, that proposal would get a high mark. If not, not. That was the sole, uh, the sole criteria. And this, this was, this was about jobs. Good for you. Well, that's uh, that's what it was intended to do, and I'm glad you clarified that so that uh, any uh, uh, criticism of activities that were funded would be misdirected at the NI NEA. It would, if it's, if the criticism is proper, then it should be at those local activities that, uh, uh, and it was the judgment of individuals that uh, were not under your control, of course. Uh, with that, I, I uh, Mr. Simpson, did you have any further questions? Yeah, I do. Uh, okay. Let me follow up on what you just said, though. The American taxpayer looks at it as their tax dollar. They don't care if it goes to the NEA, to the local people, or who it goes to. They look at it as my taxpayer going to something that they think might be inappropriate. So the NEA has to be, even though you put it out as a grant and the grant makes the final decision, et cetera, et cetera, that doesn't sell with the American public that might be opposed to some of the, some of the stuff. And I think that's how we get ourselves into the situation that occurred in the 1990s. Uh, so the NEA has to be responsible for those grants by putting some type of, of uh, I don't know, guidelines on what some of this stuff can be done. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to, I don't want to go through the 90s again, uh, and I'm sure you don't either. Uh, we want to move the arts forward uh, in I, in uh, the country. Tell me about uh, where our country stands in terms of public support for the arts versus other uh, other uh, countries, if you would, because I know you've had some comments on that in the, in the past, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately for you, <laughs> uh, your comments always get reported. <laughs> well, to, uh, there's, there's really two questions there. One, one is, as you know, we have a very thorough review process for our normal grant-making uh, efforts uh, that have a lot to do with the uh, propri proprietary, the uh, proprietary quality of the uh, mm -hmm. individual grants and the appropriateness of them. And I think we do a very good job of, of, of monitoring that. The IRA grant was particularly about jobs, and, 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 and we're, um, we're, we're in a different category there. As but they're, they're in a different category, but the public is going, you know, <laughs> if they think something's inappropriate and they're funding it with the tax dollars, they don't care what category it's in or whether it's about jobs or anything else. They're going, what the hell is going on with my tax dollars? And ultimately, we have to be responsible for it. Ultimately, we are responsible in Congress. So, right, but, but going forward, the NEA grants uh, with, with the budget that we've been given are going, are going to be uh, given in accordance with processes that we've been using all along. And I think in, you've seen that in recent years those have been uh, very, very effective. And I think we'll continue. Before you answer the second question on that, yes. are you going to recommend changes to the guidelines that Congress has put in place? Uh, uh, you've suggested that before because uh, supporting the arts is supporting artists. And, of course, we've kind of gone a different direction in, in years since the 90s, uh, and you suggested maybe that we need to be changing direction a little bit. Uh, that's, are you not part of, that's not part of my agenda this year. Okay. The, um, the other question, 
is uh, an interesting one because, and I have to be a little careful how I answer it because I am here to uh, defend the, the resident submitted budget, which I very much believe in. If you're talking about the United States um, and how it compares to the rest of the developed world, um, there is a sharp contrast in, in the level of public art support. There's no question. England is the um, country in Europe that is the worst supporter of the arts uh, in terms of public dollars. And uh, their, their budget for the, for the arts is $900 million. That would translate uh, in the United States to $4.6 billion on a per capita basis. Uh, we're not going to see that in my lifetime or yours. Um, and there are some, um, we're not exactly comparing apples and apples here because we have a much, much stronger private sector engagement with the arts and support of the arts in the United States than they, than they, than they do in Europe. But from a purely public perspective, there's no question that support of the arts is much greater in Europe. Is, do we have, uh, does Europe have, uh, or other countries, have the same type of tax benefits and stuff that, uh, that we have in this country for Not private always. involvement. We, we, we have a system that encourages private, uh, private giving, and uh, that's one of the reasons we have such strong private participation and support for the for the arts. No question. Well, thank you, and thanks for being here today. I look forward to working with you uh, to try to advance the arts uh, arts in uh, this country. Uh, you do an important job. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Uh, Mr. Lachrec, did you have any? Oh, sure. Uh, very well done, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in your first appearance, I hope there's going to be many, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing the impact that you're going to have on this uh, on this country. We uh, 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 we fully understand that uh, there is no finer uh, person with uh, more qualifications, but more importantly, more motivation and insight uh, uh, into. Uh, how to make the arts the finding of our civilization than, uh, than you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, Mr. Landisman, thank you very, very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, we're going to uh, recess for just a few moments, and then uh, we'll hear Both from, uh, uh, yeah, well, but otherwise we will just parry back and forth, which probably isn't uh, what we want to do with the thing. Um, I, th I think that uh, what we'll do is uh, wait for uh, Chairwoman Slaughter to, and as soon as Chairwoman Slaughter arrives, we'll begin uh, hearing from her, and then we'll hear from the uh, Arts Advocacy uh, Council. Very good. Thank, thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.